Juno had designed a really nice looking fantasy football themed hat by request. Yeah. Yeah, the gradient looks great, man. Like uh that was a great idea. And then using the brush font too, that was ambitious. Like I wouldn't even have if, if it wasn't for this test order, I would have just assumed to stay away from those for a hat. <laughs> so those were clips from a video I did recently with Ryan Hogue. You can watch the full video on his channel on YouTube. I'm gonna teach you how I created that design for Ryan, all in Affinity Designer. Let's go. Thanks for joining me on this video. My name is Juno with Detour Shirts. I've been designing and selling t-shirts online since 2005. If that's something you wanna learn how to do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button right there. So in this video, I'm doing something a little different. I'm gonna teach you how to design a hat on Redbubble. So not t-shirts in this video. This is gonna be for hats, caps like these on Redbubble. Recently, I did a video with Ryan Hogue and we talked about the hats on Redbubble. If you wanna check out that video, I'll put a link to that video right here. And you can see I, we show like on camera what it looks like and things like that. But I'm gonna teach you how to design for it. I'm gonna show you the dimensions in Redbubble and how to do it in Affinity Designer, how I did the cap that I showed in that video, that fantasy football design. I'm gonna show you the exact fonts that I use, the size that I use, the colors, and it's kind of the things that you might wanna avoid, you're gonna see on that video that some things were cut off and I'm gonna show you why it was cut off, um, what to avoid there. And you're gonna to wanna to stay till the end, of course, for another edition of Trend Credits. So stay till the end for that as well. So let's get into Affinity Designer and I'll show you exactly how I created that design. So here I am on Affinity Designer. This is the design that I showed on that video with Ryan Hogue, you can see pretty detailed. I tried to do a few different things to try and throw off the red bubble printing. If you see in the video, you'll notice that this gradient printed pretty well. You can see it went from white to yellow to green to blue on the bottom here. So the print did really well, as well as some of these brush strokes. The thing that it didn't do well was right here. Let me show you, I'll zoom in um, right here. So you can see I'm putting lines right through it. Um, and these are background lines. So when the lines for the print came this small, this thin, it kind of just blew it away. It didn't know how to print that small. So um, you're gonna wanna do lines like thicker like this. So you can see here, um, it kind of gets those, but it won't be able to print really thin lines. And that's okay, because most of your designs probably will wanna be thick and readable anyway. So you can see how thin that line is when I zoom out. So. See how that is? It kind of got cut off here and cut off right around here. If you look at the video, I'll show a clip to the video right here. But uh, yeah, so that's what I did. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna teach you what fonts I use for these and how to make this exactly. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna um, make your artboard the right size. So if I click on this artboard, you'll see right here, I'm in the transform tool or palette. You can see it's 20, 40 pixels by 11, 40 pixels. And if you don't wanna remember that, you can go into Redbubble. I'll show you exactly where to find that. So here I am on Redbubble. When you upload your design, you can see this fantasy football design of mine right here. You can see I put it on t-shirts as well as hats. So click on the hats. This is a new product and click edit. And you'll see the dimensions right here. Print size 2040 by 1140. So you don't have to memorize that. It's right here all the time. Most of them are. So when you click on like printing, um, for t-shirts, you can see the print size right here is that and so on. So just click on edit. This is gonna be a different size in your t-shirts. You may not wanna, I would suggest don't take your t-shirt designs and just put it on a cap. You can see they're actually a different size than the t-shirts. The t-shirts are usually tall rectangles. This is a long rectangle, more like stickers might do well here, but I would say use that space, go edge to edge and then pick your default color. It's not showing up here, which I wish it would, but you can see for baseball cap, I chose that uh, dark color, the navy, I believe, and then this one I picked another dark color. So you can do that. Again, I wish it showed up here so you can see the design, but it doesn't. So, but uh, yeah, that's the dimensions, 2040 by 1140. Let's get back into Affinity Designer. Okay, so now that we're back in Affinity Designer, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna want a couple of fonts, and these are the fonts that I use it's Lulu Clean. You can get that from myfonts.com. I'll show you right here. And then Edo SZ. I found this one at 
um, dufffont.com. So this is one of those free ones that it's can you can use for anything. So Edo, I love this brush font. So let me show you what I did here. I just typed in fantasy right here and then just put it. So I, I made this guide here for the middle. So if you click on this, you can see I drag the drag the guide right to the middle so that I know where the middle line is. That just kind of helps me center my design. And then this one, I'm just gonna type in football uh, and then drag down here, legend, type it. I did option click and drag. I did that really fast, sorry guys. Um, so football, I'm holding, I'm holding down option, clicking on it and dragging to copy, right? And then legend like that. And then now because these are vectors, you can just stretch them, right? These, this is a font still, so you can stretch it all the way to the edge. Same thing with this one, all the way to the edge like that. And then I have this football that I drew. It's just a graphic, right? I'm going to put it down here. I show how to draw a football in some of my videos, so check those out. Um, I'm not going to show you how to draw this, but you can. And then just play around with the size. So I believe I made fantasy a little smaller. Let's bring the final project so you can see football. You know, I, I kind of went edge to edge here and centered it. And then legend kind of went edge to edge as well. You just got to give, give it some space, right? And then you could stretch it out as well too. So, you know, if you want it longer than tall, just, just stretch it out and make it a little longer like that, right? And then my football, I wanted to make it a, a good size. So I can just hold down shift and make it bigger like this, right? All right, let's zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Zooming in, I'm holding option and I'm scrolling to zoom in. You can also use uh, command and plus and minus, plus and minus to do that. But I, I love the scroll because I can get just a little bit closer, right? So for football, what I do is now that I get kind of where I want it to be, I'm gonna convert these to curves right here and then ungroup. And now I can kind of play around with the letters. If I wanna move it closer or further away, I can do that, right? Um, maybe that L I don't want it to touch. Same thing with the legend here. I'm gonna ungroup and maybe make this L smaller, you know, things like that. And if you wanted it to move it down, you can just to kind of get it to fit, right? Just like that. So make some tweaks as you as you need to. And then fantasy can be just like that. So the next thing I did was just added some stars. You can use your star tool, star tool right there, and then just draw some stars. Hold down shift. And if you wanna make it thicker, you can just like that, moving that, or you can, you can change the outer and inner circle like that. And I don't want a stroke on this one necessarily. Not yet anyway, you can put one. You'll see in the final I did. And then I, I believe I only had two stars, so they're like that. And you can put as many as you want. If you want three stars, go for it. And the way to distribute this, make sure that they have even spacing, is to use this right here. So right here you can see space horizontally, and you can see they're both evenly spaced now. So same thing here, click it, space horizontally, like that. So, And most of the time I just eyeball, to be honest, so I just kind of move it like that. And if you want both of these to, to be the same, of course, you could copy and paste it here. The next thing I did was do some lines. So I just did a rectangle here to the edge. And I did another rectangle to the edge here, I believe below the ball. And you can kind of make it whatever height you want. So, you know, maybe it's that thick instead. Just eyeballing it. Right, and then I'm holding on option and shift and drag and I'm putting it on the other side here. And make sure that these are in the back. So hit this to the back right here, move to back. Now that's basically the thing. You can see I made some changes here. Let me show you what I did here. So this is it on a dark background. I just changed everything to white. And I did something different here. I added FFL for Fantasy Football League here in the same font as this. This is Lulu again. So one of the things you might have noticed is that there's an outline around the football right here. And um, I cut out the letters here. You can see 
So there's several ways to do that. I usually use the erase tool or the erase function right here, um, uh, effect right here, but I'm gonna show you another way that you can do that. So here's the football, right? I'm gonna just do Command J to copy it. And this is the, the football now on the bottom. And now I'm gonna give this one a stroke of black so that you can see it. And I'm gonna make the stroke a little bigger. So I'm gonna go to stroke here and increase it. You're gonna see right there, right? Let me zoom in just so you can see it a little better. There's my stroke, that black stroke. You see if I turn it off and on, it's that big. So one thing you can do with this stroke now that it's curves, I'm gonna change it and go to expand stroke. So you can see right there. And if I had anything in the background, if this was not cut off already, let's say I had a um, line here. Let me just, let me redraw this line so you can see what I'm talking about. So if I had a line here without the stroke, make this white, right? And made it the same size, see that right there? So I'm gonna put that in the back so you can see. And I'm gonna get rid of this one. Whoops, I guess that should be in the back. Okay, here's the line that I made. And in fact, I'm gonna go all the way across just so you can see, it's real easy. So I'm gonna take that and the black one that I just did, and I'm gonna delete it. So now you can see this line is cut off and you would do the same thing with the E and the G just make sure you have multiple strokes of that. So you can cut it away, you can subtract it, or you can just erase it if you want to too. There's both ways to do that. So you can see I did both of those, and here I just added some color. So all this is is a gradient. If I use my gradient tool here, you can see I went from white to yellow right here. This is yellow, if I click on it. If I click on this, it's blue or the cyan, and then of course, between yellow and blue is green, so that's why you're seeing a little green right there. Um, and then these, I just made some lines. So that you can see they're actual just lines that I made with the pen tool, right? And I just made it all the way across. So let me zoom in here so you can see. I got thinner and thinner or closer and closer together as I got here. And the reason why they're going through is because this curve, if you, if you see it right here, I'm, I did all these curves, all these white stripes, right stripes, I'm using the erase right here. So I drew it in and then erased it from the background or from this group here. So that's, that's how that's working. So yeah, that's my design. Um, I added some other things that you might have not seen or talked to, we didn't talk about. I tried to see this light gray here and it kind of showed up in, in his design. I'll show you that, but um, don't go super light. You can see this is really close to that. So if you want a design to come out, if you want a gray to stand out on white, I would make sure that it's darker than um, this really light one. So those are some kind of things to avoid. Avoid really thin lines like this to have it printed. Like that's really hard for uh, someone to, to print those small lines, right? So use bigger ones. Brush would work. The brush font does work. Um, I also had these really thin lines on here, so I don't know if that came out. So yeah, that's it. it. And of course, remove the background. This is the final, final that I did here. You can see without the background. And I exported this as a PNG file. All you need to do on your Affinity Designer file is click on this, hit Command Option Shift S. Right here, we'll pull this export up. Or if you can't remember that, just go to File and Export right here and make sure you export as a PNG member 2040 by 1140 and hit export and it's going to export as a PNG and that's the file you're going to use in your design on Redbubble. So hopefully this was really helpful for you. If I went too fast, let me know in the comments if I missed anything that uh, you want to know how I did here. It's really easy to do. I would suggest do specific designs for hats. If you decide to do hats on Redbubble, you know, use the full width of this. You can see how I did it here and it looks a lot better than trying to do something really tiny right here and then it's just a tiny part in your in your hat. I would suggest use the whole thing. So 
have fun with designing hats on Redbubble. It's really cool that we can do that now. I'm gonna try and do some more hats. Um, if you wanna learn how to do other hat designs, let me know in the comments if you've seen other ones in there. I'm happy to do another tutorial on hat designs. Thanks so much for staying to the end and your reward is another edition of Trend Credits. Thanks for joining me on this trend credit. Here is your trend. You might have seen this on one of Ryan's um, videos, but I, I got it from this too. Um, breaking news, I don't care. So he talked about how this one is doing really well and you can see other people are, are doing the same thing. Uh, I would not copy his. Uh, there's one right here where it's a total copy, right? Look at that and, and that. If you're gonna do something with this trend, make sure you don't do the exact same design. That's in bad taste. You can see there's other ways to do that. There's so many different ways you can do that. And um, you can do it in a different style. You don't have to say breaking news, I don't care. Look at this, breaking news t-shirt. Look, most of them say I don't care and there's a lot of copycats here. So here's one that says breaking news, nobody cares. Um, where's another one? Breaking news, I'm really hungry, right? So think of different ways that breaking news, you could use the breaking news, but change it and do something. Breaking news, I don't know, come up with something funny that's different and I think you can still get some sales. You can see this person is still still getting sales. This person's still, still getting some good sales. So you don't actually have to copy. I know I'm saying this is the trend, but breaking news is actually the trend. So let's check on Merch Informer. You can see I typed in breaking news, I don't care. It's getting an A. Again, these two are the top selling and they look exactly the same, but they're from different different people. So don't do not do that. Breaking news, don't copy. So if you don't have Merch Informer, I have a link in the description to Merch Informer. This is where you can check you know, competition and, and make sure that it's getting an A and stuff like that. So uh, again, here is your trend for this video. Breaking news, I don't care. I took the BSRs, the low BSRs, and this one is actually getting an A. So this is really hot right now. So that means you can um, do this breaking news, I don't care. And you can probably get away with doing, like I said, breaking news, whatever, or breaking news, come up with your own phrase. And I think it, it could rank as well. So you don't have to copy this exact phrase. Um, this is your trend though for this video, breaking news. That is it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this video is really helpful for you and taught you a little bit about how to design hats on Redbubble. If it was helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed already, make sure to hit that subscribe button right there. So before I leave, I wanted to ask a question of the day and the question of the day is related to this video. And the question is, have you ever designed for hats or other products on Redbubble? I know I talk a lot about t-shirts, uh, hats are new. Have you designed for it? Have you designed for different products and have you found success with that? Let me know in the comments. Um, it doesn't have to be Redbubble either. Do you do hats on Printful? Do you do you know other products on other print-on-demand sites? Let me know. I'd love to hear any of those in the comments. Thanks again for watching. And if you want to see more videos on what to do and how to design stuff for t-shirts and other products, look for these videos right here. And as always guys, keep creating and keep learning. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.